Name and date of birth? Everett Young, December 7th, 2008. I'll get your insurance information from your father. Take a seat. What? No, we're not waiting. Sh show her. Show her. The other thing I love about this scene, as we'll see, this case turns dramatic. And uh, I love that it's kind of like a needle in the haystack that just kind of looking out, you wouldn't think that this kid is gonna, you know, end up having this dramatic case, which is really how it happens. Like sometimes even when I'm meeting patients for the first time, I walk into the room and either you know right away that something, you know, dramatic is about to unfold or it's not clear at first. And then over the ensuing hours, something dramatic happens. You look back and think, you know, we didn't think it was gonna unfold that way. So yeah, I, I think here uh, it's pretty interesting. Okay then. Come around to the double door. <laughs> Who do we have the pleasure of meeting this afternoon? Everett Young, 16, took a line drive to the left eye. Tucky at 118. Oof. Four of morphine, four of Zofran. Excuse me. Uh, it was easily 100 miles per hour. Oof. Did she pass out? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Baseball's a fun activity. You any good? <laughs> any good? He's got a 95 mile an hour fastball, a 12 6 slider, a 0.94 ERA, and he's a southpaw. What's that? That's a future Cy Young. I don't know what that is either. Miss Cervati is a student doctor. She's a bit of a prodigy herself, actually. You mind if she helps out? No, ma'am. Okay. Tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. Um, oh, I can't tell. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, tell me when the light turns on. Um. Now? Light perception only. Mm -hmm. Do you want a portable slit lamp? Definitely. God. <laughs> Uh, no, I was just, I was reflecting on personally. So uh, I'll comment on one thing up front. As physicians, we see all different types of complaints. And there's something very telling about the emotional reaction you're having inside of you uh, that's useful to listen to in different moments. And for me personally, I'm always so concerned when there's ophthalmologic or eye issues that are presenting in front of me. And so I could... Throughout this scene, I could feel my own anxiety rising and rising and rising and rising. And then as they're completing the exam, we're noticing that, oh, okay, it looks like his visual acuity is decreased if he can't tell two fingers apart right in front of him. They shine a light. He can see the light. And I think that, I, I believe it's a medical student says light perception only. And that's a terrifying statement right there. Yeah, I'm absolutely with you. Eye complaints are like their own beast. And... You know, for such a tiny organ, it's so vital to our, our lives and well-being. And of course, there's a whole specialty, ophthalmology, just devoted to the eyes. And so there's so much to know uh, about the eye. And yet, as you said, it kind of somebody with an eye complaint can walk in and we have to piece it together and try to get them to definitive care, which is usually with an ophthalmologist. So, yeah, for visual acuity... Obviously, you know, we go to the eye doctor, we read the chart, read the letters and 2020 vision, or maybe it's not quite 2020. If you can't read anything on the chart, then you can either count fingers or it's just light perception. So mm -hmm. that's, that's like what happens when it's, you're off the chart. Uh, you can't see any of the letters, but you could count fingers. And if you can't count fingers, it's just light perception. Uh, also, the, the other thing that I love about the scene is like the family member standing there going, oh my God, oh my God, which also right. is super realistic and happens and is totally understandable because you're concerned about your, your loved one, your family member. And I think that it's interesting because sometimes I think that that helps in some cases, uh, I think it kind of focuses us and gives some comfort to the, the family member to be there by the bedside of the patient. And sometimes it can be a distraction to the team trying to do their job. So that's something that we also try to balance. We want to support family members and have them there, but we also want to make sure we're prioritizing the care of the patient. But I was just kind of nodding my head at that, like have absolutely yeah. uh, experienced that. Yeah, uh, Javadi, what do you think of the anterior chamber? Hyphema. Exactly. Grade four. You have meaning? Meaning blood is filling up the front eye chamber. He'll need an emergency evaluation by ophthalmology. Is that why you can't see? That's part of it, yeah. You see how the eye is pushing out? There seems to be a collection of blood behind the eyeball. The eye pressure's too high, we have to act quickly. Okay, we'll check the pressure. We're going to right now. Can you get Robbie? Look up at the ceiling for some numbing drops. It's not exactly an option to live anywhere but home when you go to college at 13. Oh. Uh, we have to check for the puncture before we can measure the pressure. Look straight ahead and try not to move your eyes, okay? Yes, ma'am. Light's going out. 
Hello, I'm Dr. Rabinovich. Everybody calls me Dr. Robbie. Hey, Greg Young. It's my boy, Ever. Nice to meet you both. Okay, I will take that slit lamp and you can calibrate for telemetry. Okay. They're holding CT for him. Let's take a look. Negative side out. No globe rupture. Okay, go with the tongue. Okay. Hold still. Okay. Left eye pressure 58. Is that high? Yes, it is. 1% lighter with that be Push one over his head. No better lateral canthotomy trace. Excuse me. What? <laughs> so, okay. This I, one did get dramatic. You're yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that, and I still got kind of thrown off. Okay, so if you look closely in a mirror at your eye at the side, you'll see that you have this curvature of your eye, and then there's actually a little bit of space behind that like front wall of your eyeball. That's called the anterior chamber. And so in this case, it's filled up with blood. It's called a hyphema. So that's what they're kind of riffing on initially. She, he's got this hyphema and his eye is swollen. And she says, it looks like there's blood behind the eye that's pushing the eye forward. So that's called a retrobulbar hematoma. And that's an emergency. One of the most dramatic procedures in emergency medicine. And as we'll see, it's basically cutting the side of the eye to relieve that pressure that's behind the eye because if pressure builds up from behind the eye uh, because of the blood, you can lose vision because of that. It can, it can destroy your vision. So it's a true ophthalmologic emergency. Um, that iPhone lamp, by the way, that's like the most technologically advanced one of those I've ever seen. <laughs> I think that was maybe more for our benefit because uh, we certainly, <laughs> certainly never seen thinking, one of those in a hospital. Like, I didn't it looks like it came out of the Jetsons. Yeah, like, that, usually that it's looks... like this old school, like <laughs> white plastic light that we kind of hold up with like a magnifying glass built into the middle and you like hold it up like this and look through it. And it looks, it's like probably from the seventies, these things, those are like the ones that I've seen. That one is super fancy. Then they measure the pressure in the eye. So she uses what's yeah. called a tono pen. She taps it on the eyeball and gets the pressure reading and it's very high. So then you see them kind of spring into action uh, and he's calling for numbing medicine. He's like, we're gonna do the lateral canthotomy. He calls for lateral canthotomy tray. So like the tray of equipment um, that's already preset. Without a CT, isn't that- Exactly what the patient needs? Yes, it is, Dr. McKinney. Uh, we're gonna lie you back, little Everett, okay? We need to do a little minor surgery to relieve the pressure behind your eye. So we're gonna cut a small opening on the side of your eye, not in your eye. Got it? Yeah. You wanna watch? No, I'll sit down. Your body, step up so you can see. Thanks for the update. <laughs> First head's on board. Numbing medicine here, okay? Okay. In quick and some burning. So after you cut his eye, see you again? This will give us our best shot at preserving his vision, yes. Dr. McKay, are you ready to do the honors? Who, me? We are a teaching hospital. Are you still here to learn? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You can release that hemostat now. Good. Tooth forceps. Feeling for the inferior and superior cruise. How can you see with all that blood? You can. It's all tactile. It was like two guitar strings. Nuts and bomb. Inferior. Yeah. Superior. Nice. Good. Oh, that's a lot of blood. Okay, let's get a repeat pressure. Pressure of 18. Perfect. Let's see if you can take it. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> Dr. Robbie, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, this I mean, is... yeah, like, that's it. So, these, this is a rare procedure, and... Uh, it, again, it sort of made me laugh when I realized that they were gonna show this because it makes you so squirmy. They're like, oh, the needle right by the eye and then oh, the eye's all bloody. And it's like, yeah. it's really kind of made for TV. But yeah, I mean, that's like how it goes. It's, you're just kind of relieving the pressure behind the eye. Yeah, so it, just to make sure I, I'm understanding this right, what we're doing is we're essentially, there's blood behind the eye, which is causing a problem here. So you, you're essentially making a small hole next to the eye to relieve that blood. And, and get the blood out from behind it. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Yeah, you're letting, by cutting those structures, you're letting, you're like taking the pressure off the back of the eye and sort of letting the eyeball come forward. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I like had a bit of a reaction when that. So there's a tricky thing always happening in these moments where teaching hospitals are fundamentally responsible for training under supervision. These these resident physicians who are doctors in training, right? You're, if you're a resident physician, you have an MD, you've got a doctor in front of your name, but you're essentially in apprenticeship and you get graduated responsibility over time to do more and more. Throughout that time, you have to be able to do everything that you need to do before you become Dr. Robbie, right? You've got to learn how to do it. And there's only one way to be able to actually do that. If you get the opportunity to do it with somebody who's comfortable and trained, kind of like 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 Dr. Robbie is in this situation. Uh, so it's, you know, I think we'd all think back about these moments of having a really great teacher with you at the bedside, helping you work through some of these moments here. And it's a great skill, you know, and it's 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 awesome to see it kind of enacted here live.